Armando Hasturigan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forming group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasturigan. In this video, we're going to look at the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system can be divided into the sympathetic nervous system, also known as the fight or flight response, and the parasympathetic nervous system, also known as the rest and digest response. The autonomic nervous system is involuntary control of body tissues. It arises from the central nervous system, which is, which is our brain and spinal cord, basically. So here I am drawing the brain and the spinal cord. The spinal cord can be divided into segments. The spinal cord is divided into 31, um, 31 sort of um, segments. We have 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral, and 1 coccygeal segments. These are important because the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves arise from these spinal cord segments. Remember that the autonomic nervous system is involuntary and that we have no control over it. Now let us look at the purpose and function of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and how they differ from each other. So the sympathetic nervous system, for example, prepares for activity. It provides more glucose so you can have energy. It increases the heart rate, dilates the pupils, and prevents the activity of digestion. The parasympathetic is the rest and digest response, on the other hand, and its main goal is to conserve body energy. So these include increasing gut mo mobility, stimulate digestive secretions, and slow down heart rate, amongst many other things. Now let us mainly focus on the sympathetic nervous system, so the fight or flight response. Now let us look at what organs the sympathetic nerves mainly target, just overview, and what they do. But first, I must introduce the ganglions here. The ganglion is where nerve cells synapse with one another. So usually in the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, um, especially in the sympathetic nervous system, there are cells coming out of the spinal cord, and then they synapse in the ganglion, and then this new cell will then target the tissue. So there are many sympathetic ganglions, but here I am only drawing the sympathetic chain, the celiac, and the inferior mesenteric ganglions, which supply the abdominal area of our body. Another very important thing to understand about the sympathetic nervous system is the nerves arising from the spinal cord, they arise from the thoracic and lumbar regions of the spinal cord. Anyways, so here we can see some preganglionic neurons coming from the spinal cord and then they will synapse in the ganglion here. And then this new neuron is called the postganglionic neuron, which will then carry the sympathetic information to a target tissue. Again, we won't go into too much detail into, into the nerves and where they come from, essentially. Just know that the sympathetic nerves originate either from the thoracic or lumbar regions of the spinal cord. So sympathetic activity will target the pupils, for, for example, causing the pupils to dilate for greater vision. It will also target the salivary glands, inhibiting salvation. Sympathetic activity will relax your airways and increase the heart rate. And this is normal during um, activity. Preganglionic neurons that, that will target the abdominal cavity will synapse in the celiac ganglion, and these postganglionic neurons will then target uh, the digestive organs to inhibit digestion. It will target the liver to stimulate glucose production. Um, and then neurons arising from the lumbar uh, segment of the spinal cord will target the adrenal glands and will stimulate adrenaline and noradrenaline production. And this will, you know, uh, promote sympathetic activity. 
Then we have postganglionic neurons from the inferior mesenteric ganglion that will target the bladder, causing it to relax, so inhibiting micturition, as well as targeting the genitals to stimulate orgasm. Okay, so that was for the sympathetic activity. And the purpose of the sympathetic activity is to prepare the person for exercise. Basically, you know, such as running or playing some sports or running away from a lion. Looking at the parasympathetic now, it's all to do with resting and digesting. So this is essentially, uh, this parasympathetic activity essentially is what occurs after we eat and we're just resting, lying down. For the parasympathetic nervous system, we have to introduce the brainstem because the parasympathetic nerves, um, a lot of parasympathetic nerves arise from the brainstem as, as well as the sacral uh, region of the spinal cord. So cranial nerve 3 causes pupils to constrict. This is part of the parasympathetic nervous system. Cranial nerve 7 the facial nerve stimulates salvation by targeting the salivary glands. Similarly, cranial nerve 9 also targets salivary glands to stimulate salvation. A very, very important nerve, which is probably the main parasympathetic nerve, is the cranial nerve number 10, which is also known as the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve literally uh, targets most of the organs and tissues for parasympathetic activity. So it causes constriction of the airways, slowing the heart rate down. It stimulates digestion and dilates intestinal blood flow. So we should have said this, but the parasympathetic uh, neurons, they arise from either the brainstem or the sacral region of the spinal cord. So this uh, nerves arising from the sacral region will target the rectum, causing it to relax. Um, and also there are some, there are nerves that will target the bladder, causing bladders to constrict. So initiating micturition, peeing. Um, as well as we have nerves that will target the genitals from the sacral segment. Um, when the parasympathetic activity targets the genitals, it will actually stimulate arousal. So for example, the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for maintaining an erection, whereas the, uh, which, whereas the sympathetic will cause ejaculation, so orgasm. So that was for the parasympathetic nervous system, whose main function is for rest and digest. Now let us look into the synapses and neurotransmitters involved in sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. So let's take a section of the spinal cord and see how information from the central nervous system, so from the brain and the spinal cord, travels to the tissues via the parasympathetic or sympathetic um, nerves. Let us first look at the parasympathetic neurons and neurotransmitters. Information from the central nervous system comes down and it will transfer this information to a preganglionic neuron, which in the parasympathetic nervous system's case is a lightly myelinated uh, neuron, which is quite long. The preganglionic neuron will release neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, which will transfer this essentially propagation of information to the postganglionic neuron, which is often unmyelinated and quite short. And then this unmyelinated postganglionic neuron, which is quite short, will release a neurotransmitter acetylcholine again, which will target a tissue causing a parasympathetic response. Now, in this case, it's targeting the, the heart. So it will release neuro, uh, acetylcholine to slow down the heart rate. But this, this image is not quite correct because there is no ganglion when the parasympathetic nervous system targets the heart. But I hope you just understand the concept and the, and the difference between the parasympathetic and sympathetic anyway. So now let's look at the sympathetic. Now in the sympathetic, we also have a ganglion. Information from the central nervous system will essentially send uh, information to the preganglionic uh, sympathetic neuron, which in this case is lightly myelinated and quite short. 
it was synapse in the ganglion released the neurotransmitter acetylcholine so you can see some similarities now between the sympathetic and parasympathetic there's acetylcholine and now this new postganglionic sympathetic neuron is actually going to be unmyelinated and long and this new uh, this postganglionic neuron will release noradrenaline the neurotransmitter noradrenaline to target the heart and to increase the heart rate so if you look at this diagram you can see some differences in preganglionic and postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system you know one is short one is long and it's opposite um, for for both uh, nervous systems anyways when dealing with the sympathetic nervous system it's important to introduce another tissue so if here the information uh, is you know in, in the preganglionic neuron it's carrying the sympathetic information it's short it's lightly myelinated it, this neuron can target the adrenal glands um, releasing acetylcholine which will target the adrenal glands specifically the adrenal medulla it will stimulate the adrenal medulla to to produce noradrenaline again so noradrenaline can be uh, you know stimulated from the adrenal glands by the sympathetic nervous system or it can be also produced by some or by the postganglionic sympathetic nerves and both these noradrenaline regardless of where they come from when they target the heart they will increase the heart rate and this is what you want when you're exercising increasing heart rate so i hope that made sense i hope you enjoyed this video uh, it was an introduction to the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems which are part of the autonomic um Thank you.